My name's Clifford Lansbury. I'm uh, one of the catalogers of furniture here at Gorringes. And the furniture department traditionally was the bread and butter of any auction room, uh, accounting for 40-50% of the turnover. That was really back in the 1980s. Now today we see a very different situation where the buying of furniture is a highly selective process. And whilst most things do sell at price, demand is, is narrowed in to a number of selective items. Traditionally, it was all about dining furniture, nice big long Georgian mahogany dining table with a set of chairs to go around it, perhaps a sideboard, and then spreading out to things like dressers and seating furniture and other decorative pieces, chests of drawers and the like. So that was very much the, the older approach to antiques and that ran through Georgian furniture into Victorian. Uh, now we've seen a rather a change of uh, direction and where demand lies tends to be in the decorative realms of the market. So if you have a very nice but, but rather ordinary George III oak dresser, demand will be modest. If you are lucky enough to have one with some unusual features, so perhaps an inverse brake front, a sort of dog kennel centre, more attractive handles, little bits and pieces that all add up, then that could mean you have the dresser that everyone decides they want and it will fetch a very good price. The other angle to this demand for more decorative purposes rather than um, aesthetic demands perhaps we would say, is that in the main demand is driven by what it looks like rather than whether it's absolutely correct. So there are pieces that have been embellished, there are pieces that have been married, things may have additional gilding, they might have a new top, they might have been altered in various ways, but if they look right in terms of to the eye, the decorative appeal, then that seems to be where a lot of the market is going. There's always room for an absolutely pure piece, that said, something that's 100% correct, original colour, original handles, never been messed around with. If it's a good piece, that will still top the bill. But in the main, the ordinary furniture, the traditional chests of drawers, dining tables, have all fallen by the way, and whilst we are selling them, they're not something that's selling particularly well. What are people looking for? They're looking for quirkiness. So this Victorian Gothic carved oak lectern is the sort of thing that perhaps in the past was not so sought after and now people are looking for that sort of thing and they'll mix and match. They won't be going to furnish their house with 100% Georgian furniture. They will put in different pieces. They might bring in continental pieces, modern pieces. There'll be a melange going on. And so we're looking to find the pieces that will, will suit different eyes. The key is originality. We're looking for a good original colour, a lovely rich patina that's developed over the years. And then we're looking for things like to make sure the piece hasn't been altered, it hasn't been cut down, perhaps the legs reduced, hasn't been married. Often bureaus have a bookcase that they didn't start life with, they've been added to them. We're looking to see if the handles are the original ones or whether they've been changed over the years. Uh, and then into further detail, we might be looking at original backboards and things like that. So there's a whole realm of, of whether something is original. And if it is absolutely pure, it will command a premium because most furniture has seen changes over the years. But for practical reasons, things get cut down to fit because there's a lower ceiling. Or the Victorians have got at pieces and they've carved them because they thought it looked a bit boring and they wanted to embellish it. So a bureau might have be covered in later carving. A lot of oak furniture has seen later carving to, to make it more decorative and perhaps try and um, enhance its value at some point or other. So that's where we start looking at. Then we look at the size of the item. Item. Generally speaking, small is beautiful. People are not looking for huge, lumpy furniture. There's always an exception, and, and the very, very biggest might command a premium. But in the main, if it's a slightly larger than normal example, it's harder to sell because there are fewer houses that it's likely to go into. So small is good, 
and this particularly would apply with pretty little chests of drawers, Georgian chests and things like that. We're looking for rare features, so a standard straight front chest is the least valuable. A bow front adds a bit, a nice serpentine front is a lot better. If it's serpentine fronted with serpentine sides, then we've probably hit the jackpot, we've got the top of the tree in terms of desirability. And they're valuable now because they're rare, and they were rare when they were made because they were more expensive, to, it was much more expensive to have have a serpentine chest than a flat front chest. So there's all kind of factors that come into this. And then we judge the today's decisions about what's fashionable and what's not, factor that in and see, see where we end up. We're also talking, of course, about modern furniture, or relatively modern furniture, that the 1950s Danish rosewood furniture is highly sought after. Uh, a lot of that requires a CITES permit to sell it due to the fact that the timber is regarded as endangered, um, but we can arrange for these licenses to be granted and generally speaking anything of quality from that period um, is very much sought after and sees much more demand than a lot of the 18th century furniture we might be handling. If you're thinking of buying a piece of furniture at auction, whether it's old or modern, then the key thing to do, go and look at the piece and then speak to one of the valuers or the auctioneers. They will be able to tell you whether it's original, if there are changes, what the changes have been, and they'll also be able to talk about the estimate, whether it's relevant or whether it's, it's woefully undervalued and it's going to make a lot more, or perhaps whether it's a bit pushy and you shouldn't necessarily pay all that money for it unless it's the perfect piece for you. So they'll give you advice on the piece. Try and buy original, that's key. Whether you're buying Georgian, country, modern Danish, or something a little bit more obscure like sort of Victorian Gothic, try and buy original, avoid reproduction. Um, and that will pay off in the long term. Beyond that, at present, furniture auctions, absolute bargains to be had, all sorts of interesting pieces that are far, far less expensive than anywhere on the high street. People talk about the Ikea effect and what have you. So if you like it and you want to live with it, then it's absolutely a really good time to buy. And even at the upper end, Demand is still down, so it's a good time to buy really good, high quality antiques and then form a collection as you will, whether you want to have all period and correct or whether you want to sort of mix and match as most people seem to these days. Just buy the right thing and then enjoy it.